Hey guys. We're back. And like I told you, I wasn't going to wait too long in between my last video and this one. So I'm back. <laughs> only a week gone. But today I'm actually so excited for the video that we have because now that summer solstice has passed, it passed while I was gone and I went to a wedding this weekend, but I wanted to do my summer book recommendations and I also wanted to tell you guys what I want to read this summer everything that's on my own summer TBR. I don't have a lot of the books that I'm going to be talking about physically, but I do have a few and then all my summer TBR books are actually on my physical TBR as well. So we're gonna go through it. It might take a little minute, a little minute. It might take a minute, but it's gonna be fun. And even though it's raining and thundering and it makes me wanna cry, it's okay. It's still summer in my brain and I am on a beach somewhere. If you guys didn't know, I live in Colorado, so summers are hot and sunny, but there's a lot of raining too. So it's okay, I'm okay. But anyways, I'll just shut up. Like anyways, I have a, the list on my phone of everything that I don't have physically. So I'm going to start off with like a lot of people's favorite book lovers by Emily Henry. So I actually read this last month, I believe. I love this book. And though it doesn't take place necessarily during the summertime, it does take place in August because the main character's sister is pregnant and she's like going through it and they decide to take a trip to a place in August for an entire month. And it ends up that her like work enemy kind of also is there and lives there and it kind of turns into something and it's so good like the vibe is great the town that they're in is like very cute it's giving kind of like hallmark in the summertime it's so cute and like emily henry's writing like you're obsessed the whole time and she really really makes you work for that happy ending and it is so good and though it doesn't take place only during the summertime i find that it was like a very good quality book and i was so obsessed with it so that's gonna be my first recommendation next i have the summer we fell by elizabeth o'rourke this is a part of the summer series. I read this last, like at the end of the year, I believe. Like it was one of my last books I read in 2023. This is about two people. It is a book that flashbacks back into time and then to the present. The girl and the guy both have a close relationship with the mother of the guy's best friend. And when something bad happens, they have to go back to the town that they first originally met in. And it will flash back to the stories of when they were younger as well. So the younger part of the story, she's like 17 or 18 and he's a sophomore in college or going into a sophomore in college. And she's dating his best friend. And the best friend is kind of awful. And she finds herself having like a connection with the her boyfriend's best friend, basically. And even though she wants to hate him and like they have kind of like some like enemies to lovers tension, she can't hate him. And she has like slight feelings for him. And it's kind of on like what happened to them and why they're not together. And it's insane. It's actually such an emotional book and there's a lot of like traumatic situations for the main female character. So I would check the trigger warnings, not that they're crazy bad, but there are sensitive topics. But oh my god, it takes place in the summer on a beach. And like though it's not like cute gorgeous the whole time, it is so like it's so good. I was invested the whole time and I read it in December. So take my word for it. Cause even in December, I was like, somebody get me a beach. Next we have Her Greatest Adventure by Hannah Cohen. So this is a brother's best friend trope. So the girl wants to go on a trip and she has this huge European trip plan that she was taking her best friend with. And last minute her best friend has to cancel. So who's gonna come and save the day? Her brother's best friend. And though they shouldn't have any any attraction to each other whatsoever because there's a significant age gap. They do and they have this fun time. They go to all these different countries. Oh my god guys, it's so good. I loved the like tension between the two characters, the way that they both knew they shouldn't be doing what they were doing because the brother was going to be pissed. And there was actually a moment where the brother and the best friend had confrontation. Like I have read so many brothers best friend books where the brother just immediately is okay with it. And I'm like, what's the point then? You know what I mean? It's that's a good one. That is like a European summer. That's why I included it in this, obviously. Next, this book, books, is not necessarily a summer book. Like they don't take place in the summer. I mean, some of them do, but I picked the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver. First of all, 
Who doesn't love five books about its own separate cowboy? There's a sports romance in there, childhood best friends to lovers, enemies to lovers, nanny single dad. I think like pregnancy trope, which is not my favorite. There's fake dating. I mean, there's so many good ones and it's giving like hot girl summer because like who doesn't want to sit by the pool and read a bunch of hot romance about a bunch of cowboys. That's why I included it. Also, Elsie Silver knows how to write a good quality, fast paced book. Wild Love is a book of hers that just came out this year. That one I would also include on this list. That is a single dad book. That whole series is gonna be single dad. And I was like literally so obsessed with it. So all of these are perfect options for a fun, fast read that will just make you happy, okay? Another one I picked was the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. This is actually a part of a series or a duo and you don't need to necessarily read the friend zone. I didn't read the friend zone. I jumped right into the Happy Ever After playlist, but a lot of people say you probably should because there's a lot of character appearances in both books. If you haven't read it and you don't want to have any spoilers, maybe I should shut up, but like spoiler warning, the main girl character's husband or fiance passes away and the Happy Ever After playlist takes place two years after the end of the friend zone. So she meets this dog, this dog jumps into her car and she's like, what the heck? And she contacts the owner and the owner isn't like getting back to her. So she's like, forget him. I'm gonna keep this dog. And it ends up actually being a hot, like, guy in a band that was on tour in Australia and he like convinces her to give him his dog back by saying I'll take you on a date or I'll let you see her whenever you want to and it's like immediate cute like he's a cute male character he's sweet he's understanding like there's a part where he helps her because she gets like super drunk and she gets sick oh my god which is like the best trope ever is when they're sick and the guy takes care of her there's like a really big third act breakup. So if you don't like that, I wouldn't necessarily request this, but I absolutely love this book. And though it doesn't always take place in the summer, it is perfect for the summertime. Abby Jimenez is just a great, great author to read. And the summertime is a good place for that, so. All right, well, next on my list, I have Heart Bones by Colleen Hoover. And though I don't typically recommend Colleen Hoover anymore and or read her, I read this last summer. And trigger warning, like there is sensitive topics about this, but I did find myself really enjoying this book. This takes place during the summertime. It is from the perspective of Bea and she meets Samson while she goes to see her dad because her mom is a drug addict and there's just a, a lot that's going on in that. I don't want to spoil it all, but she hasn't had a great life. And she meets Samson, who is this guy who's like rich and wealthy when she goes to live with her dad for the summer. And she kind of like hates him at first, but then she realizes that she has like a really big bond with this guy and they have a lot more in common than she originally thought. But not everything is always what it seems. So this is like a summer fling book. She's going to college. She's got trauma. He's got trauma, but he's rich. She's poor, whatever. It actually is very good. I, it's, it's a YA by the way. So no smut, no nothing. But if anything, I would recommend this out of like all of her books for this occasion. So I really did love this one, even though I don't typically review or read her stuff anymore. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I've talked about this slightly when I bought it in a book haul. I don't know why I just had a stroke. So this is about four women. So it's about four girls in this family, Meg, Joe, Amy, and Beth. And they are going through life because the Civil War is happening and they currently reside in New England. So they've got a lot going on. There is a lot of stories in this particular book. There's love, society, struggles, sickness. Overall, I think it's just one of my favorite classical books. And I think it really is like a summary read. Like I find myself being really attracted to reading like a classical romance, even though this isn't romance. It's not, I wouldn't consider this book romance, but it is a classic. And there are romantic things that do happen in it. I just think as somebody who loves these types of books, I think the summertime is a perfect place to read Little Women. You know, you get all the things in one. And also like, like imagine like you're at a pool and 
Anyways, I, yeah. A pretty long book. The font is, oh, hold on. The font is really tiny. And so, like, it might take a little time, but I really recommend this, you guys. And classics are always the freaking best. Another classic, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This is about Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy. Mr. Darcy is a property owner, field owner, landowner, and Elizabeth Bennet, her dad is, I don't know what her dad is. I can't remember off the top of my head. The preface of the story is that Elizabeth Bennet doesn't love Mr. Darcy at first. She thinks he's stuck up, stubborn, which he kind of is. He's a rich guy who thinks he has everything and can get anything whenever he wants. But Elizabeth kind of sees something about Mr. Darcy and they develop kind of like a hate love relationship. This is probably one of the best romantic classics because they have to get through pride and prejudice in order to find their way to each other. And it also is just like a sweet book that makes me feel smart in the summer. I don't know. This is one of my favorite classical books of all time and honestly, any opportunity for me to recommend it to you guys. Classical wise, I love this and I think it is a great summertime book. It just gives me that vibe. I just see people reading classics in the summer and I don't know why. Next, Things We Left Behind by Lucy Score. I don't necessarily think that this is a summertime book either, but I think the Knockmout series is giving me very much summertime vibes. This one is a childhood best friends to haters to lovers with a lot of other crap. I love the first one as well. That's things we never got over. Yeah. And that one is kind of an enemies to lovers. She's got a lot going on as well. The second one is not my favorite. I literally haven't like touched it really. So, you know, I don't really ever usually recommend that one. But she's got a lot going on in these books. I think just the overall vibe of them, they're big, they're thick. But the romance in this one, this is a small town romance. So it's about Lucian and Sloane. Sloane's father just passed away and she ends up seeing Lucian again and nobody can figure out why they hate each other. They hate each other so much and you'll see it in the two books before this one. They dead hate each other. They can't even see each other without being like, you know what I mean? And though people don't understand, you get to find out in this book that there's a really dark past between the two of them and they kind of work through it and end up having a one night stand. And the flames have been flamed and it's kind of impossible for them to stay away from each other after that. So I love this book. I read this one in the summer myself, so I think that's why I kind of like attach it to summertime. It's just so good. I love, I love, love, love Lucy Score, and she like literally slays every single time, and I don't know how. Okay, so last of my physical copies of things, I have My Life with the Walter Boys. It's like a small town. Her whole family dies, and she has to move with her mom's best friend, and they have 11 boys and she has connections with like a 12 of them. You know what I mean? But it is a very like nostalgic vibe and especially since the show came out earlier this year, I think, or maybe at the end of last year. I can't even tell at this point. I don't even know what day it is. I feel like this very much is giving me summertime. Like it's just a YA romance where there's just back and forth. And I really did love this story. Like the way that her like New York-esque comes out and she moves to Colorado, which is where I'm from. So I find that I also love that part. And like the way that the family like brings her in and she finds out new things about herself while also so going through things and having romantic connections. So this is such a good one. And like you can watch the TV show after if you haven't seen it and if you haven't read this yet. I think it's like a win-win. Okay, and then my last two options are The End Zone by Erin McKenzie. This is a childhood best friends to lovers, but it's not really childhood, I guess I should say, because the main characters they meet in college, like the freshman year of college. The main guy character is an NFL superstar and they're getting towards the end of the season and he starts having severe anxiety like to the point where it's make it's ruining his life and so him and his best friend the main girl character decide to take a road trip to help get him back to where he needs to be and they end up kind of realizing wait um i kind of like her in a romantic way so that's kind of that story it was really cute i just recently read it like a few weeks ago and i feel like any sports romance gives me summertime vibes but especially this one there it's also so cute i love like a childhood best friends to lovers i think it's just what needs to happen. And my last recommendation for this video is going to be Heartstopper, which is written by Alice Oseman. That is a graphic novel series that is about Charlie and Nick. And oh my gosh, you guys, 
It, they are the cutest, most adorable books on the planet. They not only go through the conversation of coming out at school, it come, it like talks about a conversation of dating at a young age, body image things, trigger warning, like there is conversations about those topics, but oh my gosh, they are just so cute and it makes my heart warm. And honestly, the show is like so good too. Like watch that as well this summer. It all gives very much just like happy Angela summertime. And I couldn't had not put those in this video. I just read all five of them like a few months ago, two months ago now. I found out that they had them on Libby. So I was like, okay, like I'm running for that. And I read all five of them over again. It never ceases to amaze, amaze me how Alice, like she slays every time. And I love them more and more as they go on. And it's just so good. So read those. And if you read them because of me, let me know if you like them. Okay, so now that we're done with our recommendations, we got to move on to what I want to read this summer because girl, I, I've i been in a reading slump for like six months and I have no idea what's going on. So I'm going to start off the video strong. I'm reading all eight Bridgerton books right now. I'm 50% of the way through the first one. And by the way, reading vlog coming, you're going to see this before that, before that video comes out. So that's obviously what I'm going to put first. All eight Bridgerton books. I'm really excited about it. I actually find myself like slowly coming out of my slump. I'm getting excited about reading again. So that's a blessing in disguise from that. Next, Once Upon a Broken Heart. I've said I was gonna read this like six times in the last two months and I have never been able to pick it up. So this is about Evangeline Fox. She believes in true love, she finds her love, and she learns that he's gonna marry somebody else. Desperate for her to be able to stop the wedding, she strikes a deal with the charismatic immortal Prince of Hearts, but she soon discovers that bargaining with the Prince of Hearts is a dangerous game. He has plans for Evangeline, plans that will either end in the greatest happily ever after or the most exquisite tragedy. So this is a series, obviously, but I have wanted to read this so bad. I love the idea of like the Prince of Hearts over the Queen of Hearts and like this whole like thing I have in my head. I'm really excited about this one. So hopefully I will put my mood in a place where I will want to read it. People we meet on vacation. I know I'm a psychopath that I've never read this before. I just recently read my first Emily Henry book and we talked about it today in this video. I need to read this. Like it's summer. It literally says like vacation. People are meeting on vacation. That was, this is about Poppy and Alex. They have nothing in common. She's a wild child. He wears khakis. She has insatiable wanderlust. He prefers to stay home with a book. And somehow, ever since a fateful car share home from college, they are the very best of friends. And two years ago, they ruined everything. They haven't spoken since. Poppy has everything she should want, but she's stuck in a rut. When someone asks if she's truly happy, she knows without a doubt that it is, that it was on the ill-fated final trip with Alex. And so she decides to convince her best friend to take one more vacation together. And I'm guessing they develop a relationship from that. So I'm excited about this one. And it's giving summertime. I mean, there's people sitting on a pool on the cover. So, you know, gotta read it. A Thousand Boy Kisses. So I know that this is tragic, but like the cover looks endearing. And I know it's a sad book because people have told me it is. I want to read it. This is about one boy, one girl, a bond that is forged in an instant and cherished for a decade, a bond that neither time nor distance can break, a bond that will last forever or so they believe. When 17-year-old Rune Christiansen returns from his native Norway to the sleepy town of Blossom Grove, Georgia, where he befriended Poppy Litchfield as a child, he has just one thing on his mind. Why did the girl who was half of his soul who promised to wait faithfully for his return cut him off without a word of explanation? His heart was broke two years ago when Poppy fell silent but when he discovers the truth of her absence he finds that the greatest heartache is yet to come. I just love the way that this looks and like I believe it's Steph Bower that's always been like super in love with this book and I bought it recently the last time I went to Barnes and Noble and I just I will be reading this this summer I know for a fact because I feel myself gravitating towards it just by reading the synopsis so hopefully that will stick and we can uh, go through it together. Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. Everybody and their mom tells me to read Lynn Painter anything. So this is about Liz and Wes and Wes is not boyfriend material, like their next door neighbors. And he's just always been kind of like a class clown, kind of. Flash forward 10 years from the great gnome decapitation, which is something that happened to them. It's Liz's senior year, a time meant to be rife with milestones, perfect for any big screen and she needs Wes's help. See, Liz's forever crush Michael has just moved back into town and horribly annoyingly he 
he's hit it off with Wes. Meaning that if Liz wants Michael to finally notice her and hopefully be her prom date, she needs Wes. He gets her in. So Liz and Wes scheme to get her magical prom moment. She's shocked to discover that she actually likes being around Wes more. I don't know if this is necessarily best friends to lovers, but they're childhood neighbors. They live next to each other. I think this is like, looks really cute and I wanna know more. Daisy Jones and the Six. Oh my god, you guys. I have wanted to read this for so long. I can't believe that I haven't, but this needs to be read this summer. This is about... They were lovers and friends and brothers and rivals. They couldn't believe their luck until it ran out. This is the story of the early days in the wild nights, but everyone remembers the truth differently. The only thing they all know for sure is that the moment Daisy Jones walked barefoot on the stage at the whiskey, the band were irrevocably changed. Making music is never just about the music and sometimes it can be hard to tell where the sound stops and the feelings begin. So everybody loved this show. I haven't watched it yet. Like I haven't even touched it. I know certain things that happen, but like I've been keeping it kind of secret for myself. So now I have Holding Up the Universe. This is written by the person who writes All the Bright Places. This is about Libby and Jack. Libby is the girl whose name everyone knows, but no one really sees her except Jack. Jack is the guy who's friends with everyone, but he doesn't let anyone in except Libby. The two make an unlikely pair, and yet they just might be able to change each other's world. It just seems cute and probably tragic, but like, I've been like needing something sad maybe. Maybe that's the vibe here because all of these seem sad except for the last one, Icebreaker. Hannah Grace, this is a enemies to lovers, forced proximity, hockey romance. This is about Anastasia Allen, who has worked her whole life for a shot at Team USA. It looks like everything is going according to plan when she gets a full scholarship to the University of California in Maple Hills and lands a place on their competitive figure skating team. Nothing will stand in her way, not even the captain of the hockey team, Nate Hawkins. So enemies to lovers, they have to use and share the ice. So I'm like really excited about all of these options. Like, I'm sorry I've been rambling for probably 20 so minutes, but yeah, that's everything that I have for you guys. I hope whether or not I gave you a good recommendation or you find something that you want to read along with me, that these will give you a cute summer vibe for you to read by the pool, by a lake, in your bed, wherever you shall, shall choose to read. I am excited for the summer. I feel like it's going to be a good reading summer and I can't wait to show you guys everything that I am reading and we can do it all together. So thanks for listening to me ramble for 30 minutes and uh, I love you guys. So I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye.